Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be reviewing tips for troubleshooting the EVAP purge valve on this 2015 Audi Q5 with the 2.0 turbo engine. Now let's get started. Okay, there's your EVAP purge valve right there in the center of the screen. Essentially what it does, it controls the fuel vapors coming from your gas tank and allows those vapors to be mixed in as part of the combustion process. All right, before we dive into simply replacing the purge valve, I'm gonna do a quick overview of other issues that may be contributing to the trouble codes you're seeing. And we want to rule those out prior to focusing our efforts on the purge valve itself. I'm gonna to have to Hold my phone in my hand because we've got a lot to look at, so bear with me. Okay, so what I want to simply bring your attention to is all of these hoses. So there's a hose bib connection right there. Here, there's a rubber hose. Hose bib, hose bib, hose bib, hose bib, hose bib, O-ring, hose bib, hose bib, O-ring. and hose bib o-ring at any of those points this system could fail and it would throw the same p code as if the evap purge valve had failed so you want to check all of those connections make sure there aren't any cracked hoses or bad o-rings and you would want to do it in a way that um, kind of systematic so kind of check one area clear the code. Go ahead, check another area, try to clear the code. Then check this last area, try to clear the code. Don't, you, don't, you don't want to do it all at one time. That way you, you wouldn't be able to isolate where the problem is. Once you've determined that all the hoses are, and O-rings are fine, now you can move on to the next item that I would look at. And the next item really only pertains to high mileage vehicles, vehicles with over 100,000 miles. And that would be the fuel cap. The fuel cap essentially has an O-ring on it and it maintains pressure within the fuel tank. And so if you have a bad seal on your fuel cap, you're gonna throw the same code or codes as if the EVAP purge valve was not working. Okay, so that, that's another pro tip for you. So now that we've ruled out the hoses and the fuel cap, let's focus our attention on the EVAP purge valve. Okay, there we go. There's your EVAP purge valve. Let's talk about how we would disconnect it. So back here, you could use some pliers or channel locks to simply, we're gonna squeeze in on this clamp, carefully push out. On that hose bit, there you go. Now underneath here, you have a electrical connection. Pretty easy, just press this and it goes out. So if you don't have a special crimping tool or a crimping clamp that you could just simply, you know, rip this off and put a new one on. So you start off with a smaller flat tip screwdriver and you slowly expand this area and you'll see, the, you'll see this pinch point opening up. You, you don't need to open it up much. So get in there, open it up. Once, it, once you can get this in here all the way, then you go in with a slightly larger screwdriver and you open it up a little more. It doesn't have to be that wide, but this pinch point, you just want to expand it maybe to twice its size. Once you just loosen it up a little bit, then you can get on here and, and slide this hose off, okay? All right. After that, what you'll want to do is apply some spray right here at this location. There's a metal tip and then there's a rubber housing inside there. So right at the metal tip, put a little bit of spray on there. And then you're gonna push and pull, push, pull, push, pull back and forth. And that, that oil is gonna allow it to slide right off of what I call this, this metal blade, okay? 
after that, that's where it gets really challenging. Because these hoses are rock hard. And so in order to remove this hose, you're going to have to have a special tool. To, and I'll, I'll include the special tool in the description below. But what I would not do is simply start wrenching on this with a pair of pliers at these hose bib connections. You don't want to do that. Or just try to manhandle this because you're probably just going to break it. Okay? So let's, let's temporarily take a quick look at the purge valve itself. So there is an arrow on every purge valve right here. You see it flows towards the front of the vehicle. One of the uh, manual tests that you can use is simply apply pressure at this location right here. If it holds the pressure for a period of time, then that means the valve is actually working, right? So that's one way that you can do a test and, and then start ruling out parts, right? But you could also put an electrical connector in here. But sometimes it can be an intermittent fault and that might not be detected using an electronic probe, right? If you're going to replace this valve, disconnect this valve system all the way up to here and all the way over there. Have it removed from the car prior to buying the part. Because what might happen is, in the process of removing this, you could crack one of these hoses, right? And then, if you ordered the part separately, you would have to now, re you would have to wait until you ordered these hoses. And so that might double the downtime on the vehicle. If I can explain it another way, make sure you can remove this whole thing, in, or whatever you need to remove, including this uh, EVAP prior to purchasing any parts. That way you know up front what you need to purchase. Okay? I've said it two different ways. I hope you guys got it. So let's go ahead and reinstall this purge valve. So I simply rotated that down and slide it on. Here you go. You want to have, just make sure that this hose is like straight like that. Okay? I'm going to slide on this hose bib. You could push it on or just, you know, make your life a little bit easier. There you go. Easy hose bib. Electrical connector. Always make sure that the rubber seal is not deformed. There you go. Clicked in place. And there you have it. That about wraps up this video on this 2015 Audi Q5 with the 2.0 turbo engine. I hope you guys found my tips to be helpful. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, drive defensively.